At the start of the series, we are introduced to the protagonist, Su Qian, who is a chef at a three-star Michelin restaurant. Qian is almost 30 years old, so she is often forced by her mother, Li, to go on blind dates. Hesitantly, she agrees to go on a blind date with her mother watching over her. However, when her blind date shows up, Qian bolts immediately because the man is quite a bit older than her. In order to evade the man, she runs into the busy road, followed by her mother. Lee screams at her, saying that she must marry soon, as she doesn't have much time left to live. Hearing this, Chion is shocked and she abruptly stops in the middle of the road. Suddenly, she gets hit by a car. Chion is immediately taken to the hospital, but when she wakes up, she surprisingly finds herself in the body of someone from ancient China. A voice asks her if she's okay. Chion turns around to see a girl named Jingjing the same age as her, calling her mistress. It turns out that Qian is now the daughter of a famous duke from the Su family. Our heroine is absolutely disoriented, but she soon hears the voice of her mother telling her that she has 45 to 77 days to find the person she truly loves and get married, otherwise she can't escape from this timeline. Soon after, Qian learns from Jingjing that she is getting married to a general from the Chu family tomorrow. This makes her excited, thinking she'll be able to get out of this timeline sooner than she expected. We then cut to the wedding night, where Qian gently sits in her room and waits for the general. She talks to herself, wondering what if she doesn't like the way he looked. After a while, the general, Jun Yao, walks in and removes her veil. She likes what she sees and decides to sleep with Jun Yao as soon as possible, believing it will bring her back to her present time. But Jun Yao is uninterested in her. He instead says that he'll be spending the rest of the night in the other room. As a result, our poor Qian is left alone on her wedding night. The following day, Qian enjoys princess-like treatment in her new home, the Chu Manor. Her maids help her in the bath and also do everything else for her. Later, Qian is summoned in front of General Jun Yao, who informs her that his mother, the Queen Mother, is arriving at the palace tomorrow, and that Qian needs to behave like she is in love with him. Our heroine then makes the general beg, but it turns out it's only her imagination. Jun Yao is still standing in front of her with a cold, unbothered face. Qian agrees to act accordingly in front of the Queen Mother, hoping she will be able to win her trust. The following day, the two wait for the Queen Mother to arrive. To Qian's surprise, Jing Ruao, Jun Yu's childhood friend, gets out of the carriage and excitedly greets him. Qian is evidently jealous of the woman, who seems to be rather flirty with the general. It's revealed that Jing Ruao is also the niece of the Queen Mother. Jun Yao and Jing Ruao catch up on their lives and flirt with each other. Luckily for Qian, the arrival of the Queen Mother cuts their small talk short. Qian is prepared to impress her mother-in-law. She warmly greets her and flatters her with sweet words. Queen Mother is immediately impressed by her daughter-in-law, calling her highly cultured and smart. She then suggests Jin Yao and Qian fulfill her dreams soon and give her a grandchild. During dinner, Queen Mother loses her appetite and refuses to eat anything. Jing Ruao asks if she can help with medicine, but Queen Mother bluntly declines her offer. In the meantime, Jin Yao wonders why his mother is being so rude to Jing Ruao. The Queen Mother wants her son and her new daughter-in-law to make a toast, as she couldn't attend their wedding. Qian excitedly grabs a cup of alcohol and urges Jun Yao to do the same. Our hero unwillingly raises a glass and makes a toast, just to abide by his mother's wishes. He is also doing the bare minimum to be friendly with Qian. To make her mother-in-law feel better, Qian decides to make her signature soup. Qian was a well-known chef in her timeline, so she believes she can win over her mother-in-law with her cooking skills. Her plan works as the Queen Mother absolutely loves Qian's homemade soup. Jing Ruao is obviously envious, and she plots to get back at Qian and make Jin Yao fall in love with her. Later, Jun Yao and his personal assistant Chan talk in private. Jun Yao reveals that Jing Ruao saved his life when they were children, so he feels like he's obligated to her. However, Chan knows his master is only committed to Jing Ruao out of appreciation, and that appreciation isn't love. It's also revealed that the Emperor had granted Qian the marriage to Jin Wao, due to which our hero was forced to marry the heroine. In the meantime, Qian and Jing Jing are fishing near Chu Manor when a young prince crashes their party. He turns out to be Prince Hao, the Emperor's son. Qian offers him grilled fish, and he loves it. So he asks her if she could cook other things as well. Feeling challenged? Qian tells him to bring any ingredients, and she will cook it. The next day, the prince brings over a sack of flour and challenges Qian to make something delicious. Our prominent chef immediately springs into action and does her magic. She starts with batter and makes different flavorful cakes. The dessert smells so good that attracts Jun Yao and his assistant Chan, who are working near the kitchen. The two men then go to investigate and find Qian with the prince. When asked why the prince had come all the way down to the general's manor, he says that he is aware of Jun Yao and Qian's situation. He then offers to speak to his father, the emperor, to annul the marriage. This way, Jun Yao can marry Jing Ruao. Meanwhile, the prince can have Qian, as he is absolutely impressed by her cooking skills. 
but Junyua doesn't like the idea as he is still unsure about whether he wants to marry Jing Wuao. So he declines Prince Hao's offer and urges Qian to return to her parlor. Soon after, the two men start fighting over her. Qian is forced to stop their bickering and tells the man that she is not property to be passed from one to another and that she can decide for herself. Just then, Queen Mother arrives and informs Zhen Yao and Qian that she has just come back from the temple and brought a soup that the monk had brewed for the couple. Apparently, the soup will help the couple produce children. Zhen Yao and Qian are forced to drink the soup under Queen Mother's orders. After this, they are locked in their bedroom. The couple starts feeling dizzy and hot because of the soup. At this time, Zhen Yao remembers his mother explaining why she had been avoiding Jing Ruao suddenly. It turns out that the Empress doesn't have a good relationship with the Emperor, and Jing Rao, being related to the Empress, might bring problems to the Chu family. Tensions rise between Qian and Zhen Yao as they start feeling hotter and hotter. Suddenly, they are interrupted by Jing Ruao's maid, saying that she has suddenly fainted. Alarmed, Zhen Yao goes to see her, followed by Qian. Our heroine knows for sure that Jing Ruao is just pulling a stunt to get the general's attention and ruin their night. Qian decides to call her out, so she frightens the supposedly comatose Jing Ruao with her acupuncture needles. Jing Ruao, of course, gets better immediately at the sight of the needles, but still plays weak in front of her loving Jun Yao. That night, it suddenly starts thundering. Qian wakes up in the hospital and sees her crying mother. Li weirdly says that the blind date was not the old man that she saw, but someone called Chu Jun Yao. Before she can ask any questions, Qian wakes up in her bed at the Chu Manor. Sadly, it was just a dream, and she is still stuck in this timeline. In the meantime, the Queen Mother hears the rumor that Zhen Yao and Qian were interrupted at night by Jing Ruao. She knows that someone is setting up Qian to meddle with her reputation, and that someone is perhaps Jing Ruao. The next day, Qian has a conversation with Jin Yao's assistant Chan, who reveals to her that Jin Yao is not as wealthy since all of the Chu family's wealth goes into funding the soldiers and the poor of the nation. It turns out that the general is generous enough to look after his people. After hearing this, Qian feels even more attracted to him, so she decides to make money for herself by opening a restaurant. Next, she goes to town looking for a place while disguised as a man. She finds a prime location, but another buyer offers more than she can afford. In the meantime, Queen Mother calls a meeting with Jing Ruao and tells her that someone has been starting rumors about Qian, and she found out that it was Jing Ruao's maid who started it all. So as punishment, she orders Jing Ruao's maid to be walloped 20 times. The Queen Mother then warns Jing Ruao to take care of the maid. The woman, however, is far from giving up on Zhen Yao. Back at the market, Qian is challenged by another buyer to a duel. Thankfully, Prince Hao arrives just in time to save the day. He asks her if she wants the restaurant, and if she does, he will buy it for her. They eventually come to an agreement to be business partners. However, Prince Hao runs off when more men turn up, leaving Qian and her maid surrendering on their knees. Much to her surprise, the general turns up and scolds the bad guys, asking how dare they hurt his woman, and then scoops Qian up in his arms. While bringing her to the manor, he informs her that his grandmother, Great Mother Dowager, would like to see them. Later, Chan informs his master about Qian's restaurant business plan. The general then orders Chan to support his wife and protect Qian and the restaurant at all costs. The next morning, though, as Qian is busy creating her business plan, Zhen Yao, his men, and the cunning Jing Ruao unexpectedly visit her. It turns out that Jing Ruao has plotted another scheme to frame our poor heroine. The evil woman blames Qian for stealing her mother's pendant. She starts pulling a crazy stunt, acting so piteously, and begging Qian to return the pendant. Our heroine is clueless about the pendant, but she definitely knows that the jealous Jing Ruao is just screwing with her. Much to Qian's disappointment, her husband Jin Yao seems to believe his childhood friend Jing Ruao's claim. The evil woman accuses Qian of selling the pendant to a pawn shop in the capital when she was in town the other day. Qian tells her that she has no reason to do so, but Jing Rao continues to make up lies, claiming that Qian needs money, so she stole the pendant. Without even hearing his wife's side of the story, Zhen Yao asks his guards to investigate all the pawn shops, and of course, they find a pawnbroker with his ledger. It has a record of the sale of the jade pendant under Qian's name. Qian is obviously surprised, and Zhen Yao tells her that he is very disappointed with her. Qian is the general's wife, and pulling such a stunt is a disgrace to the Chu family. If she needed money, she could have asked him. In the next scene, Prince Hao suddenly turns up and says that since it seems there is a trust issue between the general and his wife, it is time for them to divorce. Zhen Yao is shocked, and the prince further explains that Qian has no reason to steal because she has partnered with him for the restaurant. Additionally, he brings forward the pawnbroker's wife, who begs her husband to tell the truth. 
After realizing that they might face severe consequences for lying to the royals, the pawnbroker reveals the truth. He points at Jing Rao's maid, saying that she was the one who sold the pendant to him and paid him to frame Qian. Jing Ruao, being the mastermind, starts worrying as she could be exposed, so she again puts on an act. She throws her maid under the bus and slaps her in front of everyone, but Qian knows Jing Ruao is really behind it all. At the same time, Jun Yao suddenly grabs Qian's hand and drags her outside. He brings her near a stream and apologizes to her for not trusting her. Qian is stubborn at first and refuses to accept his apology. Jun Yao also tells her not to get too close to Prince Hao. But then, he romantically carries her back to the manor in his arms, and she goes all gooey and eventually forgives him. Later, Jun Yao tells his assistant Chan that he did wrong by Qian. He got caught up in the lies made by another woman and did not support his wife. Chan quickly surmises that it looks like the general has started to fall in love with his wife, Qian. Jun Yao disagrees because he thinks his wife, Qian, is too plain and messy. But when the maid brings home the food made by Qian, he almost pounces over the food, not wanting to share it with anyone. The general seemingly likes his wife, but is yet to realize it. In the meantime, Jing Ruao is still not satisfied with wanting to destroy Qian. When she learns that there is a woman whom Qian fears, she comes up with another plan. It is revealed that Qian dreadfully fears her big sister Yang, and the two do not have a good relationship with each other. The next day, Qian and her business partner Prince Hao formally open their restaurant. On the first day, they give free food to the poor people of the capital. Meanwhile, Jing Ruao is furious at Qian for increasingly stealing the limelight. So she has her maid talk to Qian's sister Yang to apparently create mayhem at the restaurant. As planned, Yang visits the restaurant with her men and starts slandering Qian. She then orders her men to destroy the place. However, Qian is unbothered by the destruction. Meanwhile, Prince Hao is freaking out because of the loss they now have to bear. Qian calmly says that Yang will be responsible for the loss and she will have to pay three times whatever she and her men destroyed. Just then, the police arrive at the scene and arrest Yang, who is made to pay threefold for all the damages. When Jing Ruao hears about her failed mission, she is clearly angry, but she doesn't stop attacking Qian with her lies and fake accusations. She goes on to spread another rumor that Prince Hao and Qian are romantically interested in each other. The part where Prince Hao likes Qian is true, but our heroine only has eyes for General Jun Yao. In the next scene, Chan informs his master about the rumor. Jun Yao is evidently furious, although he doesn't believe Chen Yan is actually involved with Prince Hao. Chan then warns Jun Yao to treat his wife warmly, or else the prince might snatch her away from him. His assistant's words of advice get the better of him, and that night, Jun Yao calls Qian to the bath. Much to her shock, Jun Yao asks Qian to undress him while calling her his woman. She excitedly does as she's told, and they end up kissing each other in the bath. The following day, the couple seems to be in a very good mood as they flirt and act lovingly with each other. This comes as a surprise to Prince Hao, as he had just recently witnessed a rather cold and unbothered Jun Yao, who was very unsupportive of his wife. For the next couple of weeks, Qian's business blossoms as she earns more profit than expected. As Prince Hao is congratulating her on the success of the business, Jun Yao arrives to remind him that after all, she is the general's wife. The two men indeed have a cold war going on between them over our lovely heroine. Qian is forced to speak up when the two men continue insulting each other. She promises to cook a delicious dinner to keep everyone happy. As another day comes, so does another opportunity for Jing Rao to plot against Qiang. This time, she manages to drive away Qiang's customers from the restaurant by secretly poisoning the food. The customers then come to Qiang, insult her, and start attacking her. Thankfully, before the situation can get any worse, Jin Yao arrives at the scene to defend his woman. He fends off the bad guys, swearing that the person behind this ma'am will not go unpunished. Jun Yao carries Qian in his arms and takes her to their manor. He takes care of her injuries and also massages her back. During this time, the couple starts kissing each other and eventually end up making love. Jun Yao is later approached by Jing Rao, who pretends to care for Qian. She asks if Qian is fine, to which Jun Yao blatantly tells her not to interfere with his marriage. He also asks her to leave the palace. After all, she is just a guest there. Hearing this, Jing Rao starts sobbing, reminding him of the many years they spent together as children and adolescents. But Jin Yao clarifies that he doesn't have any romantic feelings for her, but he does care about her since she once saved his life. Hearing this, Jing Rao is even more motivated to make Qian pay for supposedly stealing her man. She swears to herself that this time, she will get rid of Qian and destroy her life. In the meantime, we finally get to see Qian's father from the Su family. It's revealed that he's a greedy man who favors his elder daughter Yang over Qian. 
But when he hears that Qian has been winning the hearts of the Queen Mother, Great Mother Dowager, and General Jun Yao himself, he believes this will help him hoard lots of money in the name of his daughter. But Qian knows better, so she gives him a list of expensive items to buy for her dowry. Her father is forced to give her the dowry under the orders of the Emperor himself. One day, Jun Yao and Qian make a formal visit to his grandmother, the Great Mother Dowager. Thanks to her charming personality and prominent chef skills, Qian successfully impresses Great Mother Dowager as well. In response, she tells Qian that the Chu family is very lucky and proud to have a woman like Qian. As days go by, Qian continues making delicious food for Great Mother Dowager. She enjoys her time with her new family. However, Great Mother Dowager suddenly falls ill one day. After the doctor's examination, it's revealed that her food was apparently poisoned. With her modern era knowledge, Chian tries her best to save Great Mother Dowager, but sadly, she succumbs to the poisoning. This is a problem for Chian, as she was the one who was cooking the food for Great Mother Dowager for several days. She indeed looks like the main suspect. As a result, Chian is sent to prison, and when Jun Yao decides to support her, he is stripped of his title and also sent to jail. Jun Yao assures her that he will take care of her, no matter how hard things get. One night, Prince Hao and both Jun Yao and Qian's maids sneak into the prison to visit their favorite couple. It turns out that Qian hasn't given up on her cooking, and she has continued to make food for the prisoners. Prince Hao joins him in their cell, and this is when Jun Yao asks him to arrange a meeting with the emperor himself. The prince is initially reluctant, but when he sees the poor face of Qian, he eventually agrees. Just then, a mysterious figure comes out of the darkness wearing a cloak. He is none other than the Emperor himself. The Emperor was unconvinced of the fact that Qian is behind the death of the Great Mother Dowager. Jun Yao warns that this could be a much bigger thing than they think, as more people might be involved in this plot. The Emperor rightly guesses that someone is trying to usurp the throne. He then suggests that they be ready for whatever comes their way in this grim situation. In the meantime, we finally get to see the main culprit. It turns out that the Empress is behind all of this chaos. She doesn't want General Jin Yao to be the next in line, and we learn that she wants to dethrone the Emperor so that her son can become the Emperor. This is the reason why Qian was framed for the murder, so that it would affect Jin Yao's reputation too. Jing Ruao is also an accomplice in this plot by orchestrating lies and planting false evidence in Jin Yao's manner to frame him for dishonesty. All of this truth is revealed when the Empress and her men attack the palace to overthrow the throne. She arrives with her men, ready to kill the Emperor. The Emperor sneaks back to the palace from the prison and sits calmly on his throne. He lets her know that he is aware of her vicious plot. He already has a plan in mind. Soon after, much to their surprise, Prince Hao and Jun Yao, clad in their soldiers' uniforms, arrive at the scene and take control of the situation. They manage to subdue the Empress's men and force her to surrender. Jing Ruao starts to whine, telling Jin Yao that she was under the influence of the Empress, and she tried her best to save him. However, Jin Yao knows better and doesn't buy into her manipulations anymore. Soon after, the Empress, along with her goons, are thrown out of the palace. They are later sentenced to years in prison for their crimes. That night, Qian wakes up from a nightmare. Jun Yao comforts her by kissing her, but Qian keeps saying that she doesn't want to lose him. Qian now realizes her time has come to leave this timeline for good. But now that she has found her lover and husband, Jun Yao, she doesn't want to part ways anytime soon. She fears this will be the last time with him, the last kiss she will ever feel. The following morning, Qian wakes up at the hospital in her present timeline. She is absolutely heartbroken, especially when she finds out that she isn't with her husband Jun Yao anymore. Her mother calms her, saying that everything will be all right. Qian starts sobbing when the nurse comes in to announce that the doctors are doing their rounds. But she abruptly stops crying when the doctor turns out to be Jun Yao's doppelganger. Her mother says that the doctor was actually the blind date she was supposed to meet before the accident. This was all Qian needed to hear before she leaps out of the bed and runs to Jun Yao, the doctor. She then hugs him tightly, still sobbing. In the final scene, we see the current Qian and Jun Yao living happily together in their own version of Emperor and Empress.